We'll ask Jim if he expects it to continue in 2023 and whether he thinks a substantial recession may be in the cards. Jim, thanks so much for coming on the program to help us make sense of this highly uncertain moment in time all the way from China. Uh, I am actually in China today. I'm making a speech here, but I am. Yeah, I'm in Asia. Yes, yes. And I just finished quarantine in, in China. Not fun. A bit uh, but by well, the way, Adam, I do have to make one small request. Listen, I make plenty of mistakes. So so I, it's a very nice introduction you made. But you should also say and Jim is happy to acknowledge that he makes many mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I appreciate that, Jim. And that's why folks are such huge fans of yours. Uh, it's not just your knowledge base, but it's just you're a straight shooter. Well, Adam, if you want, we can sit, we can talk about my first wife. That was a mistake. <laughs> that was a huge mistake. Oh, my gosh. So I make many mistakes. Do, do we need more than an hour then? <laughs> days, days. But <laughs> okay. I will tell you, you know, I did happen to, to run into a, a little while back. And I am so glad I have not married her anymore. At the time, it was seemed terrible. But, oh, my gosh, what a great mistake that was. <laughs> well, I'm glad you can smile about it now. I certainly hope you weren't running into her with a car. No, 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 no. It was quite <laughs> by chance. It doesn't, it doesn't matter, but it was a, another accident. <laughs> okay. Well, look, um, we are talking here. This video, uh, video is going to be airing. Uh, during Thanksgiving week. And so just let me be one of the first to wish you a happy Thanksgiving from America, Jim, while you're there in China. Um, and we're very grateful to have you take the time while you're there to, to come on this program. Um, I got a lot of questions for you as usual. Um, but if you don't mind, I'll start with the, the general one I like to kick these discussions off with. Um, any answer you have is fine. What is your current assessment of the global economy and financial markets? Well, the, the current assessment is, as you know, we had a big problem in 2008 or so, and then central banks and governments around the world started printing and spending and borrowing money like never in recorded history. So, Adam, if you give me a few trillion dollars, I'll show you a very good time. I mean, you know, the world economy has been flooded with money and spending uh, since then. America has never gone so deeply in debt so fast um, as we have done in the last decade, more than a decade now, 13 years. So yes, we're all floating on a bit of uh, artificial stimulation. Uh, it always comes to an end, no matter how much you, you pump into the economy. It seems to be coming to an end. Inflation is coming back, which leads to higher interest rate. And some people are starting to say, wait a minute, this is too much debt. This is absurd. Not everybody. I mean, the Japanese are still doing it. Yeah. But some people are starting to question how much more we can do. So I'm not sure if the world has come to an end yet. But I do know it's going to come to an end eventually in the form of another bear market. And you remember 2008? We had a big problem because of too much debt. Well, Adam, look out the window. Since 2009, the debt everywhere has skyrocketed. The world has never seen anything like this accumulation of increase in debt. So the next bear market has to be the worst in my lifetime. I mean, it's simple arithmetic. The debt has skyrocketed everywhere. It's going to lead to a problem someday, and maybe today is someday. Or maybe it's already in process. All right. Well, I, I want to dig into that with you. And, and I think that's a good jumping off point into sort of the topic of, of, of monetary policy. Um, as we head there, let me just ask you a general question, given your vast um, expertise, um, both in terms of your career, but also you're a student of history. Um, when the debt gets out of control uh, for a nation, um, it, it really only has two choices. Right. It, it has to let defaults clear all the bad debt, which is hugely painful in the immediate term. Um, or what it what it usually has to do is destroy the currency um, by choosing the inflationary out um, from the debt pile. 
Do you have a, a, a sense or gut feel that it's going to be one way or the other, or is it a coin toss at this point? Well, given that the people in the Federal Reserve are not very smart people, you know, they're academics and bureaucrats, they mainly want to keep their job. What they will do uh, at the first sign of some, some good news, and it may already be here, they will start talking about and even acting on slowing down. It sounds like they're going to slow down for a while because they think things are better, uh, and they may be, at least on paper. Uh, but eventually, Adam, they're going to print money till we run out of trees. Okay. That's what all they know. Um, if there start to be a lot of bankruptcies or even a few bankruptcies, they will get phone calls from people saying, you must save us. This is a matter of Western civilization. You must save us. They will panic and they will print more money. I don't think in the history of the world, many central banks have said, too bad, guys, it's time for a lot of bankruptcies. Go down the tubes. That's not the way bureaucrats think. That's not the way academics think. And the end result will be not good for you and me, but it might temporarily save their jobs. Okay. And, and uh, I don't disagree with any of that. I, I doubt a few of our listeners will as well. It, it is interesting, though, because we, we, we are now living um, in a strange time in that arc where many of the central banks are, you know, they are they are tightening. They are hiking and tightening. Um, and uh, I know what you just said. It's interesting, though, could, but Jerome Powell himself has said, hey, America, we're going to have to take the pain of what it's going to require to, to bring inflation down here. Um, I'm going to put some words in your mouth and you can correct them any way you like. My sense is you're pretty skeptical of, of his level of commitment to that, that, that as soon as we start seeing the first real, uh, you know, stumblings of the economy under these higher interest rates, um, I'm going to guess you, you're going to think that the central planners are going to do an about face and they're going to go back to their stimulative easing ways. And it's just going to be, you know, more of what we've seen for the past 10 years. Well, let's go back to the last time something like this happened, which was the 1970s. Inflation kept getting worse and worse, and the central bankers made it worse and worse. But then the president, who was Jimmy Carter at the time, said to Paul Volcker, who he was going to appoint as, he did appoint as head of the Federal Reserve. Volcker was a, a bureaucrat, but Volcker understood the situation. And Carter said to Volcker, you do whatever you have to do, and I will support you. Mm -hmm. Now, Volcker didn't believe him at first, but Carter reassured him that he could do anything he had to do. And, and in the end, of course, Carter lost the election because Volcker did right. what he had to do. Volcker knew what had to happen. I mean, this will shock some people, but interest rates on Treasury bills, short-term U.S. government Treasury bills went to over 21%. My That's not a typo. 21% on Treasury bills because Volcker tightened and tightened and tightened. He, and, and Carter said, OK. Carter said, OK. Well, it, it caused bad times, but it killed inflation. Carter lost the election, but it did kill inflation. I don't think that there's a politician in the land today who would do that or support that. And I'm not sure there are many bureaucrats. I don't see this guy we have now as another Paul Volcker. And again, you know, in Japan, the head of the central bank has said, I will print his word unlimited amounts of money. And he's doing it. And the Japanese politicians say, do it, do it, do it. I mean, unlimited. It's unbelievable how much money that guy prints. But it's so he is not certainly not a Paul Volcker. Uh, I don't think we have a Paul Volcker in the U.S. And eventually they will cave in.